This course starts with a story. The story of Laplace's demon. Laplace's demon is a thought experiment proposed by Pierre Simon de Laplace, who said in 1814, we may regard the present state of the universe as the effect of its past and the cause of its future. An intellect, which at a certain moment would know all forces that set nature in motion, and all positions of all items of which nature is composed. If this intellect were also vast enough to submit these data to analysis, it would embrace in a single formula the movements of the greatest bodies of the universe and those of the tiniest atom. For such an intellect, nothing would be uncertain and the future, just like the past, would be present before its eyes. Laplace didn't call this Laplace's demon, but it's now known with this name and is the thought experiment that Laplace proposed in order to put forward his view of the universe as a deterministic universe. Now, I'm going to take my poetic license and divide the Laplace's demon into three demons. One is the reality demon, the other one is the causality demon, and the other one is the probability demon. And I'm going to imagine that I had a, an interview with each of them. So I approached the reality demon, I asked, I was told that this, at the very moment, you know everything that happened in the past and will happen in the future. And he answered, well, I know quite a lot, but I think they exaggerate. So you don't know everything, I asked, surprised. I know quite a lot, said the demon, but some things are not fully deterministic, they are random or they have some free will. Oh, do you mean all things from particles to humans? And he interrupted me, he said, they didn't tell you? I said, what? I don't talk much, I occasionally talk to the likes of Aristotle, Newton, Darwin and Einstein. Okay, sure, thanks for talking to me, I'm flattered. But he said, perhaps the causality demon can talk to you, but be careful, she has lost her reputation. Okay, thank you, bye, and, and then I went to talk to the causality demon. Say hi, I, I, I just talked to the reality demon. He says you can help me. I'm keen to know the truth, how things work, how things are, why things happen. The causality demon said, sure, I can help you. The problem is that I talk to a lot of people and they don't get it right. Great, so who did you talk to? I asked. She said, Aristotle, Descartes, Newton, Hume. Oh, I noticed some discontent on Hume. And she said, well, I'm not sure what to make of this guy. He understood what I said, but he emphasized too much the problems of causality. And after that, I was ignored for a long while. Listen to what Bertrand Russell had to say about me. The law of causality, I believe, like much that passes master along philosophers, is a relic of a bygone age, surviving like the monarchy, only because it is erroneously supposed to do no harm. Oh, that was harsh, I said, but what happened next? She said, well, you talked to reality demon, didn't you? Yes. And you notice we are different entities. I say, yes, I witnessed that. So you mean causality is not in reality? Is it an illusion? So was Hume right? Say, so in a sense, I am part of reality and in another sense, I'm not. I ask, do you mean like Immanuel Kant, who said that causality is a category of reason in the mind and is a priori? No, no, she said, that is in part correct, but I don't mean that. So what do you mean? She said, things in reality are not absolutely random. 
there are, there are some patterns. Things happen because of things that happened before. But causality is a simplification of what happens in reality. So that is why you lost reputation. You said, no, no, not quite. I lost reputation because people had wrong expectations about what I can do. But I can do quite a lot. Oh, okay, I'm interested. Tell me. Causality is a tool that helps us understand reality. People wanted me to be something else, to be the reality demon that explains how reality is exactly. But being a tool is not less important, you know. It allows, your, it allows you guys to understand reality, to intervene in it, and to imagine what may happen in the future. And in this way, being able to anticipate some aspects of the future and be better prepared. Use that knowledge to create things for your benefit. Oh, that's pretty cool, I said. But don't tell the reality demon, but I think you're much more useful than, than him. Of course I am, she said. And after they forgot about me, I had been busy creating tools for you guys to listen to me. I taught some of you how to use graphs. Well, that seems great. Can I ask you if those graphs allow me to predict with precision what will happen in the future? She said, no, they are pretty useful, but do you, you don't, they don't allow absolute precision, only approximations. But I work together with the probability demon to give people an idea of the precision of the approximation. Okay, thank you very much. I have to talk to the probability demon then. So, I approached the probability demon and I had to say that I was expecting something different. Probability demon said, you mean you were expecting a she or a he? I said, no, I, I can expect a demon to be an it. I was expecting a gigantic roulette, a majestic die, or at least a big coin, but a drone. Well, it is not just the drone, you know. The city behind the drone is part of the deal. Okay, cool. How does it work? It's quite easy, really. Imagine that the population of the city behind me is one million people. And we arbitrarily, arbitrarily divide the city in two parts. We creatively call them A and B. 600 people, 600,000 people live in A. And 400,000 people live in B. Now consider that I work in a pizzeria and I deliver pizza to any part of the city, but not outside the city. What is the probability that my first delivery of today will be in the region A? I said, well, it's not so easy. I have to make some assumptions. Correct, he said, he said, but the assumptions are straightforward. There is no bias in how much people like pizza across the city. Every delivery will be in A or B. It cannot be in both at the same time. And it has to be in the city. Okay, if you're not tricking me, I would say that the chance of the first delivery being in A is 0.6 or 60%. Exactly right, he eats it. I do complex things, but I don't trick people. So what is the probability of, of the first delivery being in B? Well, 0.4 or 40%. Perfect. You see, you don't need a gambling machine to be a probability demon. And I left the demons to reflect on what I learned. So the idea of these three demons is to give you an idea that there are three things that we are going to be interested in in this course. One is what reality is. So when we do research, psychological research, we're trying to understand reality. Um, in order to do that, um, scientists develop models to understand reality. These models uh, are, um, in the past, there were mechanical models. So, for example, in the 17th century, Descartes proposed a clock as an, a metaphor of the universe. Now, 
we are interested in psychology, in, in the mind, so there are more modern uh, models were used to try to uh, describe how the mind works. One was the, the telegraph, then the telephone, and more recently the computer. And the computer as a metaphor of the mind has been a model that has been used for a long time now and still quite popular. So computational models of the mind are, computational, are models of reality. And um, some mathematical models that are claiming that the, the variables that are in the model are reflecting some aspect of reality, we can consider them models of reality. Now, reality um, models are quite rare in psychology. They are more common in physics we are going to use the causality, the causal models. So we are going to, to talk more with the causality demon than with the reality demon. So the causal models also claim to be models about something that happens in reality. But they are much more simplified. There is an oversimplification of reality. All models are, are simplifications. The reality the models about reality are also simplifications, but the causality are even more simplified. They divide the world into variables and causality, causal models are just relationships between variables. And these relationships are causal relationships, so the modification in one variable will, will cause a change in another variable. So we are going to use causal models in this course a lot. And then the probability demon. The probability demon is a way of um, trying to um, illustrate models that use probability. So these models, unlike the, causa the causal models that are models about something that happens in reality, but are simplified models, probability models are models about numbers, models of populations, samples, and experiments, but those are not experiments done with people, they are done with numbers, or populations of numbers, or samples of numbers. So I'd like to do this separation between the causal models and the probability models, because typically this is not done, and we use the probability models in the form of statistics, statistical models, as the models of reality. And this is a huge mistake.